Hi, Mr. Sapone here, and today we're going to talk about Pascal's principle and some hydraulics. I actually have one of these little devices here. Um, we learned previously that pressure is a function of depth. Depth pressure equals rho, gh, density, times gravity, times height. Um, we know that if we have a container of water or a swimming pool, that g and p are relatively constant. Uh, p is in rho. You know, the density of the water is a constant value for the most part and gravity is a constant 9.8 or 10 meters per second squared. So pressure in any fluid really depends largely on height, how your pressure is gonna change with your height. So this device right here just kinda shows an equal water level. The shape doesn't matter, there is no shape in this term here, um, and that's why you have an equal level with all the water lines, regardless of what shape the glass takes, because the pressure has to be constant with height. So keep that in mind. There is a homework uh, question uh, where this is the homework question where I ask you to rank these pressures from greatest to least, uh, least or least to greatest. And keep in mind what pressure is a function of. It's only a function of height. So that's a very, very, very strong hint. Okay. So you squeeze a tube of toothpaste. We know that the toothpaste comes rushing out the open end. Um, so you're exerting a pressure here um, where you're squeezing the toothpaste and the toothpaste is coming out with a certain pressure. These two pressures are actually equal. Pressure one is gonna equal pressure two. And we're gonna see that's Pascal's principle. Um, and pressure we know is force over area. So this force over area equals this force over area. Um, so force over area one equals force over area two. Um, so Pascal's principle. A change in pressure at any point in an enclosed fluid will be transmitted equally to all parts of that fluid. Sounds very innocent and very simple, and it is, but as we're going to see, this has a huge uh, ramifications for industry and, you know, building things in engineering in the terms of hydraulic devices. Um, so this, this is a very, very simple and innocent looking statement, but it's huge in terms of industry and engineering. Um, and what we can do with this is build something called a hydro hydraulic device. And you see this gentleman, maybe, I don't know, 70 kilograms, lifting a 1,200 kilogram car. Um, and what happens with a hydraulic device is a small amount of force can lift a very heavy object. Um, so we're going to gain something called a mechanical advantage. And I'm going to show you how that comes from Pascal's principle. All right, so... We have a hydraulic setup here. You might go to like a, a garage or mechanic. They might lift your car using hydraulics and whatnot. Um, but basically, you're going to apply an input force here on the left. It's There's a fluid in here. Um, it's not compressible. The fluid doesn't compress. So when you push the fluid down here, it's going to transmit all the way over, and it's going to push the car up. Now, normally, if you got a 2,000-pound car, well, you'd have to push down with a force of 2,000 to lift it up, but that's not going to happen here. Um, basically, you have a smaller area here for this piston than you do over here. And they actually tell us that this area is 10 times the size of area 1. Um, what that means is, if you were to push some of this water down, um, this water is not going to go up as much because there's more of it in here. So basically, if you were to push this piston down, say, 10 inches, um, because this area is 10 times greater, um, this water, you know, there's 10 times more water here, it's only going to go up one inch. Um, so keep that in mind. But we know that pressure here equals pressure over here. So force over area on the left, the input force over area, is going to equal the output force over area. And some remarkable things happen when we follow this through. Um, let's say that you were just pushing down here with a force of one pound. And let's say this area was just one inch squared. Let's just make it one and one. What is your pressure? Well, one pound over one inch squared is one over one. It's one PSI, one pound per square inch. You have a pressure of one. Well, if this area over here is 10 times the size of this one, well, what output force are you going to get? An input force of one pound over one inch squared is going to lead to what output force over 10 inches squared? Well, one over one equals what 
over 10. Well, the only way you get these being this being equal is putting a 10 here. 10 over 10 is 1. And what that shows is that an input force of 1 yields an output force of 10. You are gaining a mechanical advantage because the area of uh, the output area is 10 times bigger than the input area, you are gaining 10 times the amount of output force. So we can use a small force to lift a very heavy object. Um, and we're just gonna do a problem out with this. This is just the same picture, ignore the numbers on it. A force is applied to an area, A1. What output force do you get if the output area is five times as large as the input area? So it's just the same problem, but instead of 10, it's gonna be five. So you're applying a force here. The area over here is only five times as large as time. Um, how many times stronger will your output force be? Well, we know and we love this equation. F1 over A1 equals F2 over A2. Basically, input pressure equals output pressure. Um, and we also know that A2 is equal to 5A1. They tell us that the output area is five times as large as input. So A2 is five times A1. And all you got to do is take this number and plug it in. So we have F1 over A1 equals F2 over 5A1 because 5A1 is A2. And now basically all you need to do is solve this for F2, but I'm going to do it a little bit long-winded uh, because uh, I know people like cross-multiplying and I know that sometimes when you see fractions it confuses us, but really you're just going to bring the 5A up and cancel. Um, but anyway, I'm going to cross multiply these to simplify them just because I find students like cross multiplication when dealing with fractions. And if you cross multiply them, um, you end up with F1 times 5A and you end up with A1 times F2. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to cancel out. There's something on both sides that we can get rid of. There's an A1 over here. There's an A1 over here. We can simply divide both sides by a one and cancel it. And I did that right there. And what are you left with? Well, you're left with F1 times five equals F2. So F2 equals five F1. So we kind of got the same result in the last one. In the last one, the area was 10 times larger. So the output was 10, output force was 10 times as strong. In this case, the area is five times larger. The output is five times as strong the output force so it's going to work perfectly like this if you made a hydraulic setup where your output area was a hundred times bigger than your input area well your output force is going to be a hundred times greater so some of these problems you don't even have to do math to solve you can just kind of get this rule down and so whatever times the output area increases so does the output force and this gives us what we call a mechanical advantage, and that's where your output force is greater than your input force. Okay, so let's solve one problem with this, because I think you have a few problems on your homework. A hydraulic lift uses Pascal's principle to lift a 19,000 Newton car. If the area of the small piston is equal to 10.5 centimeters squared, and the area of the large piston equals 400 centimeters squared, what force needs to be exerted on the small piston to lift the car? So, um, we are working with the formula pressure 1 equals pressure 2. Force over area 1 equals force over area 2. Input pressure equals output pressure. And what we got to do is figure out these variables. Um, what are they asking us for? What force needs to be exerted on the small piston? The small piston is the input force. It's the input um, piston. So basically we are solving this for F1. They tell us directly area one. They tell us the area of the large piston, the area of the small piston. They also tell us the force. A hydraulic lift uses Pascal's principle to lift a 1900 Newton car. You're lifting a 1900 Newton car. So your output force has to be 1900 or 19,000 Newtons. Excuse me. So basically you list all your variables. Uh, F2 is 19,000, A1 and A2 are given to you directly. And all you got to do is plug these variables in right where they go in the formula. Your F2 is 19,000. We don't know F1. 
Um, your A2 is 400, your A1 is 10.5, and all you got to do is solve this for F1 now. Most of you should be very good at this. Um, again, we're going to cross multiply. Uh, we like cross multiplying. So you have 400 times F1, and that equals 19,000 times 10.5. And of course, you just solve this for F1 by dividing both sides by 400. Uh, and we call that isolating the variable in math class. And you get an answer around 499 newtons. So if you have this hydraulic lift, you push down with about 500 newtons, and you can lift a 19,000 newton car. Um, that's pretty cool um, that you can gain such a large mechanical advantage, and you can lift something very, very heavy that you otherwise would not be able to lift without knowing some physics. Um, and hydraulics are used not just to lift cars and stuff, but brakes, um, cars, airplanes. We definitely have hydraulic brake systems. Uh, Pascal's principle explains why when you're laying on an air mattress uh, out in the woods and there's rocks, what well, pressure is distributed evenly so you don't actually feel these little bumps and stuff. Um, some other places where hydraulics are used, um, this right here is a hydraulic lift or hydraulic jacks. And I just stole this kind of paragraph off the internet because it kind of gives you a good overview of all the places where you see hydraulics. With a variety of applications, hydraulic systems are used in all kinds of large and small industrial settings, car garage lifts, and warehouses, as well as buildings, construction equipment and vehicles, paper mills, logging, manufacturing, robotics, and steel processing are all leading users of hydraulic equipment. So this Pascal's principle, real simple, pressure one equals pressure two. Input pressure equals output pressure um, when you're dealing with incompressible fluids is used everywhere. It's used to give um, industries a mechanical advantage. Um, so that's Pascal's principle in hydraulics. I hope this was helpful.